Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2017 Radio Humber Hall of Fame. At this time, I'd like to welcome the 2017 inductees to the Radio Humber Hall of Fame. special meaning for me. Uh, back in, in Venezuela, when I was born in, and raised, uh, radio was, uh, I was an avid radio listener since I was a, a little kid, to the point that uh, they had to take that out of my room. There was no, no, no phones or iPads, but there was, there was radio. And I would stay through the wee hours of the, of the night listening to radio. And, uh, and I want to thank all radio people, because uh, as an immigrant to Canada 16 years ago, my wife and I, uh, took on radio again, and 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 what what the uh, what radio did for us was has been incredible in in acculturation to to this uh, new country. So the, the 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 work that you do in that sense is I don't know if it's a knowledge or not, but I want to take the opportunity to do that tonight. Okay, so um, a few a few tidbits of uh, of uh, uh, the program. Radio was uh, founded. The radio program was founded in 1972 by Chum Broadcast Phil Stone. It has educated and trained over 3,000 students within 45 years. The radio home, yeah. <laughs> the Radio Humber Hall of Fame is about celebrating those who have come through the Radio Humber Diploma and Postgrad Certificate. An excellent ambassador of Radio Humber and Humber College, respected in the broadcasting and our media community, and demonstrate forward thinking in the education and evolution of media. We're inducting today six inductees Adam Wild, <laughs> Amber Payne. Brad Barker, <laughs> Maurice Sherman, <laughs> Maura Austin, <laughs> and Ryan Doyle. And receiving the Builders uh, Award tonight, our very own Jerry Sherman. <laughs> I want to take the opportunity to say a few thanks. Um, first to Antonio Folino and his staff and the students of the Hospitality, Recreation and Tourism Program here at Humber who were out there with their fantastic food and, and uh, attention. Um, also, Cra Craig Lapsley from our broadcast TV program and his team. Uh, the radio stu students volunteers are uh, and two superstars from our school, Kylie Wynn, who made all this possible. <laughs> and Melissa Motilov, thank you so much for doing all this. And tonight is being hosted by 
and we're four superstars of our program. <laughs> Michael Downey. <laughs> Courtney Eves. <laughs> Danielle Dontremont. and Ram Raj Sarvendran. <laughs> Thank you very much and enjoy the night. Thank you, Dean of School of Media Studies and Information Technology, Guillermo Acosta. <laughs> and I'd just like to point out there are a number of current Hall of Fame members here in the audience tonight. Could you stand up for just a moment so we can, we can see you? Thank you. The first of tonight's distinguished recipients left Humber in 2008 to join in the launch of the Bounce 101.3 in Halifax. In 2011, after spending a year entertaining listeners of Virgin Radio here in Toronto, he ventured westward, where he would spend nearly two years with Virgin Radio Calgary. You know him as the host of Your World This Week, a reporter for Breakfast Television, and the afternoon host on KISS 92.5. A warm welcome to Adam Wilde. It was a game changer. I uh, I remember kind of that first that first day, all those jitters. Nobody's talking to each other in the classroom. Uh, everybody's trying to, you know, you're still got that high school thing, so you're all, you want to be cool. A year later, I walked out, I think, a different person. You know, I had made great lifelong friends and had kind of come into my own and become comfortable with myself, I think, for uh, the first time in my entire life. It was, it was huge. It, it taught me basically everything that I didn't know, which was pretty much everything. I didn't, I didn't know anything about sales. I didn't know anything about production. I couldn't write a news story. In our first class, in our first class, it was a sales class. And I'll never forget it. Jerry Shaman walks in. He's the head of the program. He's the one that's let us all in. And he says, uh, okay, put your hands up. How many of you want to be on the air? Every hand goes up. Of course, who doesn't want to be on the air? That's why you're in the radio program. And he said, okay, hands up. Who wants to make more than $40,000 a year? And everybody hands up. And he's like, uh, okay, cool. Hands up, uh, how many people know that most radio announcers don't make more than that? And everybody kind of just stares and was shocked. And he's like, all right, so how many people want to be radio announcers now? And I think half the class kept their, uh, kept their hands down. And it was actually a sales class. It was a really great introduction into it. And, and it's funny, it seems like a, a, a small moment, but that was actually one of the moments that was the biggest in my career because it was like, okay, if you want to be on the air, if you really want this, uh, there's going to be some sacrifice and some struggle and some moving around and some eating ketchup sandwiches, which I did. Ketchup sandwiches, really delicious. But it's all going to be amazing and fun and worth it, but you're going to have to sacrifice. And Jerry, in that moment, in that little question period, you know, all of 10 minutes in that discussion, kind of showed us that. And it was great to set myself up for that expectation, and I think the rest of my classmates too, because it could be a tough road from time to time. Adam Wilde. Uh, thank you so much. Um, it's, <laughs> it's so funny. When you, when you look at one of these, and it doesn't happen often in your career, um, you realize the, that you were basically just the sum of the people that helped you out along the way, if that makes any sense. Like, you know, you, you look at people at the Oscars and they're, and you think they're up there and like, wow, they did it themselves. And you realize when you win something, and I'm not saying that this is the Oscars, but it's pretty damn close. Um, you realize that this is every single person that said, yeah, I'll listen to your demo along the way. Or yeah, I'll hire you out of Barry, Rob Basile, I know you're here. Um, you know, to, 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 to it's, I don't know how to put it into words, but it starts at this school. Uh, an incredible group. Jerry Shaman was the head of the program when I went here. It is so cool to be going in in the same year as you. 
And so many of us, I mean, so many of us in this, I know Sid's here and Roz is here, um, obviously Maury, uh, which I'll get to. Um, you know, Jerry, you were the guy when we were here and, and you did such an incredible job. Thank you so much for all the work that you put in. Please, another round of applause for Jerry Shalman. Um, there's another couple people I want to quickly thank. Uh, I swear I'm not going to take too much of your time. There are the two people that made the most difference in my radio career, and that was uh, Rob Vasile, who hired me at 101.3 The Bounce, which is now Virgin Radio or whatever. Um, <laughs> and uh, Rob Vasile launched this radio station, and he gets a demo from a guy in Barry who's terrible. And for some reason, uh, Rob hired me, and he hired me part-time, and he's like, I can only guarantee you a few hours every week. I'll put you on the promo team as well. Hopefully that works out. And I not only gained a great mentor, uh, but he's also one of my best friends to this day. And I remember our first air check together, and I think this is a real bonding moment. He kind of, he was over, he was looking over his computer, and his, his shoulders started to come up higher, higher, higher. You could hear, like, feel the stress in the room. And after one of the breaks he listened to, he just kind of looked over at me and said, what the fuck was that? <laughs> wow. And <laughs> so, so he took me from what the fuck was that to passable, which I really, really appreciated. Um, and a year later, uh, Kiss 92.5 relaunched here in Toronto. And that was one of the other big moments in my career. I'd been pestering Mocha for, for, uh, for years, sending him my demos and that sort of thing. And, um, I remember emailing this, this person that I'd only ever heard of, Julie Adam, who was this maverick radio pr uh, programmer, and I thought, oh man, she must be like really intense. And uh, I get this email back going, hey, I, I really liked your demo, and, and I really liked your passion for the radio, I'll be in touch. And I, I, uh, I remember being kind of shocked by that, getting the call, coming to Toronto, and meeting Julie and realizing that there is not a single person on the face of this planet that loves uh, radio like Julie Adam. I, 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 truly, truly. Um, so Julie, Julie embodies what it is to be passionate about radio. And I, you, you see it every time, like Roz and Mocha just opened our brand new studios at uh, Bloor and Jarvis. And they're on the second floor, they're absolutely stunning. And you see Julie out there and she's just like, this is so great. This is so awesome. And Julie is the president of radio for Rogers. And that is the example we follow. So it's an amazing, it's, a, it's been amazing to be hired by you now twice, Julie. Uh, it's been amazing to work with you. And I'm so glad that you made time in your schedule because I know you have a family and a life that you barely get to anyway with your crazy job. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, to Roz, Mocha, Maury, everybody at KISS 92.5, um, I love working with you guys. Roz, Mocha, I see you once or twice a year because of our different schedules, but every time I do, you know, it's, it's funny. You guys are the same guys that I met seven, eight years ago. It doesn't matter how great the show gets, the heights that you guys reach, you're still the same guys. And I, I love you for it. That's why the audience loves you. You guys are fantastic people, Maury included in that. So, uh, and I also want to say, Maury, congratulations, buddy. It's, it's amazing <laughs> and deserved. Um, and lastly, uh, I'd like to thank, well, not last, I'd like to thank um, Jesse Blake, who's my producer, who is here, who's amazing. He does my podcast, he does the radio show, he doesn't sleep, he's unbelievable. Uh, my intern, Michaela, who is also here, uh, who, man, no one screens a call like you, Michaela. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, she keeps the crazies out. The good crazy we like, the, you know. Anyway, I'm, in, I'm with friends here. Um, I want to thank um, Steve Dangle, one of my best friends from high school, who I do a podcast with, who I love, who is here with his wife, Sarah Louise, who is also one of my best friends. And quickly, before I forget, uh, my mom, my dad, my fiance. I, uh, um, I, I once, and I don't want to make it seem like I ha this happens all the time, but I once won an award in Calgary and my parents flew out, and I had to give a speech like this, and I forgot to thank them. Um, so I wanted to make sure, Mom, Dad, thank you so much for getting together, uh, making it happen. That was great. High fives all around. Uh, yeah, I see that high five. That was great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being tough on me, and thank you for being amazing. And to my fiance, Caprice, I know this career is not easy to deal with day to day. Thank you so much for your patience, for your love, and for listening to me. Guys, thank you so much for, uh, for giving me the time.
leaving Humber in 1994, our next inductee took the industry by storm. She's had her own show on 1050 Chum, and now you can listen to her as a traffic specialist on CP24 and 104.5 Chum FM. She is Amber Pay. I gotta go back to 1994, because that's when Amber first came into our life at 1050 Chum. A call went out from the radio station to the Humber College radio program, looking for two students who were willing to attend the Toronto Auto Show for 12 hours a day, for 10 days straight. Luckily for us, Amber was one of those people, because that led on to a number of events over the next couple of years that she helped us host. I mean, this bubbly, passionate uh, individual willing to try anything and everything that radio broadcasting had to offer. Southside Shuffle, New Year's Eve dances, uh, Corvette Summer, Honda Junior Jays. Uh, oh, the list just went on and on and on. J during the late 90s, she was approached to uh, head up the Chum Christmas Wish Program. At that time, and probably still one of the largest Christmas charities of his nature. Not a job for the faint of heart. With the deadlines, the timelines, the demands, it was a very hectic job and Amber being true to her form, of the energy, the enthusiasm, the passion again, she pulled this off, a big feat. Amber, from all of us who had the opportunity and the pleasure to work with you at the Chum Building on Young Street, and for those who still work with you down at the Bell Media Building on Queen Street, a heartfelt congratulations and thank you for everything you did for 1050 Chum and Chum FM. And congratulations on your induction into the Radio Humber Hall of Fame. You deserve it. Unfortunately, Amber is unable to attend tonight, but the program coordinator for the Radio Broadcasting Diploma Program, Sheila Walsh, will be accepting the award on her behalf. Hi, everybody. Thank you. I'm really honored to be able to uh, accept this on Amber's behalf. I've had the pleasure of um, working with Amber and she is uh, bubbly, I believe it was the, the word um, Brad used and that's an understatement. She's a lovely woman. I do have something prepared to uh, read for you that she sent my way. I would like to send my apologies for not being here in person to accept an award that I have always hoped to receive. This is truly an honor. Thank you to Humber Radio and to the selection committee who graciously chose me to be inducted along with an exceptionally talented group. I can barely see you guys there. To Humber great Joe Andrews, I am grateful to you for choosing me to represent Humber and 1050 Chum 23 years ago. It's a relationship I still cherish every day. Thank you for the late and truly fabulous Stan Lark for believing in my abilities and encouraging me to go for the gold by placing a terrified young woman in the 680 newsroom for her internship. And thanks to fellow inductee Jerry Shaman, I did my Humber audition with Jerry in 1993, and not only was he kind enough to allow me into the program, years later I was humbled when Jerry asked me to instruct one of the courses. I have been blessed in my career to be nurtured by the best in the business who allowed me to follow my dreams and learn so many different aspects of the business of radio. Chum was a playground of all that is radio perfection. Isn't that the truth? Brad Jones, who spoke on my behalf tonight, gave me every opportunity available. I am still amazed to have worked alongside Roger Ashby, Marilyn Dennis, Tom Jokic, Ingrid Schumacher, and fellow Humber inductee Ashley Greco. I was trained by the incredible Kim Geddes and Bob Summers and witnessed news royalty in Brian Thomas, Jeff Howitt, Dan Blakely, Doug Beaumont, Sheila Walsh, thanks Amber, and uh, <laughs> Paul Cross. <laughs> Often radio leads to television and doing both is not only a gift, it's a daily learning experience. CP24 has allowed me to continue to learn and grow and appreciate a different side of media. And this goes to all the students in the room. If you have the opportunity to do both, take it. Without the love and support of family and friends, many in radio, none of this would be worth it. 
I have been reminded recently about how small and incredibly supportive the radio community is, something I embrace and am grateful for. I was so proud to share with my mother before her passing last week that she raised a Hall of Fame inductee. I will always be so appreciative of the doors Humber opened for me. I will never forget all of the valuable lessons I was taught and I will forever be proud to tell anyone and everyone that I went to Humber. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Hailing from Nova Scotia, this next inductee turned his jazz studies degree into a 10-year music career, six of which were spent in the band The Pursuit of Happiness. After moving to Toronto, he went on to study radio broadcasting here at Humber. In 2001, he found his home at Jazz FM 91, where he's taken on multiple roles, such as operations manager and music director. You can catch our next inductee Monday to Friday, 2 to 6 p.m. on Jazz FM 91. A round of applause for Brad Barker. Whether Brad is interviewing a giant of jazz like Pat Metheny or Gregory Porter or Jack Dejeanette or a Humber student who's in the music program, there's something about putting that guest at ease and yet still drawing out the music knowledge and experience that he does that's unique to him that I have never seen. What are your thoughts on Brad being inducted? It's about time. I, I think he's a really uh, uh, gifted broadcaster, so it all makes sense to me. And uh, I think he really understands the, uh, the magic of uh, radio. And one of the things that he's so good at is, uh, is creating this feeling of intimacy. Brad, can you tell us about your Radio Humber experience? Well, I had an incredible experience at Humber. Um, I was a mature student, so that means older. Uh, and I had an opportunity to go there and, and take the accelerated program and um, I, I think at the time I was uh, really looking for an opportunity and when I got there I realized that I had come to the exact right place. Uh, um, all, the, uh, all the instructors, all the teachers, uh, the vibe, it all seemed like it was incredibly professional and really getting you ready to be in the industry. So uh, I just I can't, can't talk about it highly enough. What role did Radio Humber play in the development of your career? Uh, well, uh, you know, I'd say it's it's 100% uh, from from not having really any experience in broadcasting, and then going to the school, having a chance to work with people that were in the industry. I looked at every day as being sort of a job interview because all my instructors were out there working in in the field, and I thought maybe any of them could have potentially an opportunity. So that's the way I approached the experience, and ultimately, even though maybe that wasn't necessarily the case, the encouragement that I got from the people that were there uh, in the program, uh, the expertise, uh, the fact that they were all in the industry and I was able to sort of um, talk to them and, and relate to them as, as contemporaries and as, and as people, it felt like um, that I was on the right course, so uh, just an, an incredible. Thank you very much. Uh, my speech will be the most boring of the night, just to create an expectation here tonight. But I want to uh, congratulate the other inductees. Uh, it's great to go in with you guys. And, and I'll jump on the Jerry bandwagon. Jerry was the head of the program when I was there. And Jerry gave me nothing but support and encouragement. And uh, I, uh, I really can't thank you enough, Jerry. So I appreciate your support so much. There's also a, a, a gentleman that, that was an instructor when I came to Humber College, uh, Terry McGilligott, who I've been also a colleague of at Jazz FM 91 for the past 16 years. And I, I don't know what Terry did, but I have a feeling he twisted a lot of arms, and that's why I'm standing here tonight. So, Terry, I thank you very much for your support. You owe me money. <laughs> you got it. Um, I also would like to take a moment to uh, uh, thank my partner in crime for the last uh, 22 years is Caroline Brown, who's here with me tonight. And um, the words Brad Barker and Hall of Fame would never be said in the same sentence if I had not uh, hooked my wagon to her star. I love you and thank you for being here tonight, Caroline. 
I also want to thank, I, have, I don't have much family, but I have my sister who has been one of my big champions my whole life, Bonnie Lynn and her wife Andy are here tonight. I love you guys and thanks for being here with me tonight. And I want to thank my colleagues, Ross Porter, our president, and Danny, who has been a, uh, an absolute lifeline for me at the radio station. Um, you know, it's all been said, but, you know, as someone who w played in a band for a long time and had some success, and then when, they, when I decided to sort of pivot to something else, there was a lot of uh, fear, panic, um, you know, you name it when you're, ch you're changing careers. And uh, the fact that I, I went to Humber, uh, it's not uh, uh, overstating it to say that Humber gave me the last 20 years of my life. Uh, they gave me the opportunity to meet people, the jobs that I have had, and the one that I've had for the last 16 years is directly related to my experience at Humber College. So I am here to thank Humber, uh, not only for this award, but for uh, the last 20 years of my existence. So thank all of you for being here tonight, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this award tonight. Thank you. This event is being live streamed tonight. I just wanted to remind you all of that. So hi, mom, how's it going? This next inductee is known for his persistence, which got him into this program here at Humber, but also has allowed for him to interview the likes of Madonna, Larry King, and even the Muppets. So you may have seen him on the red carpet, or you may have heard him on the Roz and Mocha show, on KISS 92.5, a round of applause for Maury Sherman. Who? Thoughts on Maury being inducted? Oh, that Maury. Um, hmm. Is he standing right there? Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> KISS 92.5, commercial free Ross and Mocha mix with DJ Climax. Maury is universally known in this business as one of the hardest working people anybody has ever worked with. Maury is the friggin' man. I love that guy so much. He's such a hard worker. Uh, he is a pit bull in this industry. He works so hard for the Raza Mocha show, for KISS 92.5. Uh, if there's anything that needs to happen for our show or for the station, Dan Mori is the guy uh, that will and can make it happen. Love, love, love Mori for that. I always say that I always used to think that he was a spy or he had friends in law enforcement or he was in the deep web or the dark web because he just had this uncanny ability of anybody that I could possibly talk to, he would just get them on the phone. And it's not easy to get somebody's cell number these days. I don't know how you actually do that, but he managed to do that. And I know that the way he's doing that is not legal. That's why I've never asked him how he does it. Radio Humber played a huge role in my development. I mean, I was already working in the industry at the time, but it taught me, you know, certain lessons, certain little tidbits of information that I took with me forever. It turned, taught me about networking. It taught me about, um, I guess, just certain things that you wouldn't learn actually in the field. I will never forget the awesome time I had at Humber. Such an amazing couple of years, such an incredible group of people, friends that I still have now, and experience that I will never forget. And lessons that really you take with you for your entire career in radio and it, it was just such an awesome experience. Who knew that it would be so cool to be learning about the career that you've always wanted to do. Maury Sherman. I was enjoying watching myself. I'm so honored and humbled to be here this evening to accept this award on behalf of myself. <laughs> so a radio frequency analyst walks into a bar. Oh, that megahertz. <laughs> There's a little secret I have to tell you folks. I don't like AM radio. To anyone that likes AM, I say FM. Ah, uh, the Hall of Fame. Two things I've always loved together at last. Halls and fame. There's Jerry Hall, Arsenio Hall, Michael C. Hall, Hall and Oates, our beloved Let's Make a Deal host, Monty Hall, Annie Hall, um, Holly Berry. We've got Hall's Cough Drops. Hallelujah. 
Uh, to be recognized for one thing I know how to do and the one thing I'm passionate about doing is incredibly overwhelming. Unfortunately, this is not an award for stamp collecting. <laughs> all kidding aside, uh, I want to thank all the staff at Humber Radio who gave me a beacon of hope and guidance to a dream. As I look into the audience, I see many who have influenced my career and my path so far. I see Julie Adam here. Hi, Julie. I see Paul. I wish that one of my ideas was as good as your last 10. Unbelievable guy. If you ever get the chance to work with him, he's awesome. And yes, I will drive you home. Um, Wayne Webster is here, who I honestly, no joking, owe my entire career to Wayne Webster. This guy saw me when I was interning with Punch Andrews and brought me in and decided, you, do you want to opt? Do you want to just stay here and I'll pay you? And, and because of Wayne, I am here today. And then, of course, there are two people that I could not be here without, and that is Roz and Mocha. If not for you guys, I never would have experienced what it's like to funnel eggnog or a shamrock shake. <laughs> Charlie Sheen would not want to adopt me, and I never would have gotten the chance to interview Angelina Jolie at length about baseball. Mocha likes to joke that I always make everything about myself. Tonight, Mocha, I think you would agree that this I can gladly make about myself. In a career where I got, get so much joy for making a fool of myself every day and have for 20 years, I often tell people I popped out of my mother with a microphone saying, good morning, Toronto. The radio bug bit me at a young age. My dad would prepare breakfast and I would listen to the little transistor radio on the kitchen table to all the shows I loved. I would imitate them and think to myself, this is what I want to do. I need to be in radio. I simply could not transist without radio. Mr. Frank Sherman never stood in my way when I wanted to hang out uh, with people like Punch Andrews at Mix 99.9 and off overnights at CFRB. He was always there to cheer me or uh, to cheer me on or drive me wherever I, I needed to go. Uh, thank you, Dad, for making me who I am. I always get made fun of for my nose, so thank you for that too. <laughs> um, another person I need to thank who influenced my career is Marilyn Dennis. I don't even think Marilyn knows how much of an influence she had on me. And now I get to work with your son, Adam. Uh, and of course, I have to thank my better half, and trust me, he is the better half, my husband, Matthew, and I am so sorry. I am not wearing my wedding ring tonight. <laughs> I, this isn't a joke, I completely forgot it by the sink. And know that, guys, that does not mean I'm single. You inspire me, you lead me, and you ground me. I know that living with Dammit Maury is probably a lot more than you bargained for, so I love you for putting up with me. And one last thing before, uh, the, this, if the, in case this causes a fight at home. Matthew, does this match the decor? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's Hall, folks. and has become the Vice President of L'Arche Communications, a company that currently operates four radio stations in Ontario and a digital marketing agency. She's also the President of the Ontario Association of Broadcasters. It was just yesterday that I was at Radio Humber, but it wasn't. Uh, just thinking about this, it was uh, 30 years ago, actually, 1987 was when I uh, graduated. And uh, it was an incredible experience. Um, it was a three-year course back then. Um, and, uh, you know, it really changed the way in which I thought about the working world and a career. And it really drove me to the point where I knew that radio was absolutely 1,000% what I wanted to do. So. Try everything. Don't. I was a little bit, uh, believe it or not, I was a little bit shy back then and I was afraid to try new things. And uh, some of the areas of radio I didn't have a lot of confidence in. And uh, I guess looking back, I, I think I would tell myself to, you know, the old saying, feel the fear and do it anyway.
Unfortunately, Maura could not be here tonight, but she has recorded a message for us. It's amazing. I, uh, I'm so blown away by this, and I'm so sorry that I can't be there tonight because I'm so honored by this award. However, I am on a beach sipping a mojito in everyone's honor, so don't feel too sorry for me. Uh, I would like to thank uh, everybody at Humber College. Uh, it was a great experience while I was there. Also to the uh, staff and fa faculty, uh, I can't tell you how many Radio Humber students I've hired over the past 30 years, and uh, they have actually all been awesome, and, uh, and that's thanks to the staff and faculty who continue to put out awesome product, awesome talent, and uh, I thank you for that. I'd also like to thank uh, my current employer, Large Communications, who uh, has been great uh, support for me uh, throughout the years, and uh, would also like to thank uh, Sheila Walsh, actually, um, for me being able to keep some of my Humber roots by sitting on the uh, advisory committee for Radio Humber uh, for the last couple of years. It was a wonderful experience and again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Our next recipient discovered the power of talk radio here in 1996. And it would profoundly influence the course of his career as a storyteller. He's a sports writer for the Huffington Post and the host of The Rush on News Talk 1010, Ryan Doyle. You're looking at a really chilly weekend. Tom Brown, CTV weather anchor. What the hell is going on out there? It was summer just days ago. I think I was honored. I mean, obviously, if anybody tells you that what you've done in 20 years of broadcasting is actually worth something and has made the school you, you went to uh, better in any capacity or made it, you know, a little bit more prestigious, I think it's a, a big honor. I'm humbled, too. I mean, obviously, you don't think of yourself as a Hall of Famer when you're doing broadcasting, when you're doing radio. Uh, you just hope you connect with people every single day. I, I learned a lot about why people are passionate about radio and about why this is such a great business to be in and about how personal and intimate radio can be. So learning all of that really got me addicted to, to radio. So I mean, I owe everything to them. The chemistry that we've had right out of the gate's been fantastic. So it's just been, I actually can't believe it's only been six months because we really feel like we've worked together for a lot, a lot longer than that, which is again, you know, pretty, pretty awesome in any on-air relationship. It's been fantastic. I would tell my student self to stop sleeping through class to maybe not spend as much time in the school pub and understand that radio is a pretty great experience overall. I mean, there were many times where I came to a classroom and I would sit in the back and I would not participate and I didn't have a lot of courage and I was, I was pretty scared back then and it was weird for me because I wouldn't put my hand up and I wouldn't volunteer for things and I wouldn't, you know, think that, you know, I'm going to step off of this ledge and, and see where it goes. And I think the former me needed that courage and it's weird to see new me doing this and being in front of a microphone and old me not ever wanting to have been in front of a microphone or talked to anybody. So I would just say be more courageous, you know, be fearless. Because I think a lot of what radio is and what radio is great about is that it is being fearless. It is just kind of making that jump and making that leap. Unfortunately, Ryan could not be here with us tonight. So accepting the award on his behalf is Sheila Walsh. Thank you, Downey. Uh, hi again. Um, I'm really glad to be able to accept this on Ryan's behalf. I've known Ryan for a long time. He's like a little brother to me. He was uh, actually the intern at CFRB when I was working there, and I used to give him a ride home every night for many years, and I got to know him. He's a really, to me, still a great kid. Of course, he's a grown man now, but um, he, uh, he also provided me something he'd like me to share with you tonight. When I was 18, I had no idea who I was and what I wanted to do with my life. 
and based on the fact I had no real skills other than carrying on a conversation, I applied for radio figuring, what the hell? I walked through the doors of Humber College for the first time, and more importantly, through the doors of my radio class. Inside was a group of lovable misfits and a hardened newsman named Robert Holliday leading the class. Ooh, there was a big ooh there. <laughs> See, Paul? People love news. People love news. You're, you're the new Robert Holliday. Um, any nerves I had in my stomach dissipated. These strangers would soon become my closest friends. That teacher would become a mentor, and I learned from each and every one of them about life, passion, emotion, and being true to who you are. Each of those lessons I would later figure out were integral in building not only my radio identity, but teaching me who I truly was. This induction to the Hall of Fame tonight ties me permanently to an institution that I have always felt so connected with, that has been a part of my DNA for over two decades, and a place that turned a lost boy into a man who knew what he wanted to be great at in life. I'm humbled, I'm honored, thank you all so much. It is an absolute honor to be announcing the Builders Award, award tonight. This award goes out to the first station manager here at 96.9 Radio Humber. He created a homemade FM transmitter so that our signal could go to the L parking lot. <laughs> he also, because of him, we were the first station, campus station, to be given a license in over 20 years. In 2008, he created a little thing you may have heard of called the Radio Humber Hall of Fame. I said the Radio Humber Hall of Fame, you guys can applaud right now. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Jerry Shaman. Award. Way to go, Jerry. I can't think of anyone more deserving of that than you. You're a real architect for our programs and certainly for 96.9 Radio Humber. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, I am uh, the program head of media studies at the University of Guelph Humber. And uh, for those that don't know, University of Guelph Humber is a collaboration between Humber and uh, the University of Guelph. Uh, it's a four-year honors program. Uh, media studies has 800 students and we have between 50 and 60 instructors a year. Uh, specializations include journalism, public relations, uh, visual communication, digital communication, and media business. Uh, so we, we take a broad, broad look at media. And, uh, and there is a practical component to it. Uh, Jerry, you are so deserving of this. I'm so happy to be able to uh, be able to congratulate you on tape. And uh, yeah, love you. Yeah, it's, it's hard to give you a Reader's Digest version of, uh, of 30 years, but, but I'll try. Um, I started in 1988. It was um, the fall. I remember that very specifically. Um, I received a phone call from a, a friend of mine, an acquaintance in the industry, who was a uh, vice president of Chum Radio at the time, and uh, asked me if I'd be interested in uh, in working at Humber College. That was the biggest hurdle: getting people to understand, hey, we're, this is real. This is people make their living doing this. This is not just people, you know, with a microphone or a camera playing, you know, making movies. Jerry, unbelievable! Congratulations. We're extremely excited for you. Uh, I think this is a great honor for you. Think about you every day when I walk through the studio. We have this sign up here that says Canada's best broadcasters got their start in this studio. Congratulations on the Builders Award. Much success and happiness in the years to come. Jerry, thank you for all that you do. Congratulations, Jerry. Uh, well deserved. Thank you for being an advocate for myself getting into the business but also just for being an advocate for radio as a whole. Congratulations. We got to other students in that class, the more we realized that you did take a chance on us. Most of us didn't have the marks that would lead us in this direction. We weren't perhaps great in high school, a lot of us. And moreover, there was no clear path to success in radio or media at all, but you saw something in us and you took a chance. And for that, and many reasons, we are truly, truly grateful. You weren't a leader in that tell us what to do kind of way. You were a leader in that, show us how to get there. You let us win, you let us lose. You weren't easy on us, you were tough on us for sure, but that's the kind of stuff that I think makes a really big difference, and certainly when it comes to work ethic. Jerry, uh, you're a real beaut, man, and it's, uh, 
and it's, I'm just grateful that I was able to have that small window of time that I did with you and thank you for giving me the start in this business that is so weird and so crazy and so beautiful congrats man and congrats Humber Jerry for 30 years you've been a leader and innovator in media education you've had a profound influence on a generation of broadcasters and media professionals on behalf of everyone at the University of Guelph Humber congratulations to you on this well-deserved award. Please put your hands together for Jerry Shawman. Stop. Okay, okay. <laughs> You guys are bad for my reputation. People are gonna think I'm a nice guy. Um, Sheila Walsh will accept on behalf of Jerry. <laughs> you know what? Somebody said it earlier, but I'll say it again. Um, humbled, I'm so humbled. The talent, the energy, the excitement in these halls, every time I walk through here, I can feel it. It's the current students, but it's also the past students. They're gone, they're gone, but they're not gone. Today and tonight I met a lot of old friends. I'll tell you a funny story. I came here wanting to be a teacher, not really knowing how to be a teacher, and I ended up finding out that the students taught me. They showed me how to be a teacher. They taught me not to give up on them. And I appreciate what George said um, about not giving up on students and letting them fail. I think it's important to, to do that. It's great to succeed, but it's also okay to fail. Um, I always think that because from failure you learn something and you take it somewhere. So this is such an honor and I'm so blown away. Everybody came up here with a speech and I'm, I feel kind of disarmed. I, I, I didn't really prepare an awful lot. I, I have a lot of people I want to say thank you to. Um, first, my family, of course. They put up with uh, all the evenings that I spent up here scheming about an FM license and building a new tower and all these crazy things. Um, so thank you to them. Uh, my wife and my daughter are here tonight. Um, thank you to the inductees that I, I'm just privileged to be inducted uh, into the Hall of Fame with you. It's such great company. I, uh, you know what, I just, I look down the row and, and uh, just a thousand memories just flash by. 30 years, it will be next year that I started at Humber College and was hired here and walked in the door and Stan Lark, the coordinator of the program at the time, met me at the door and welcomed me to Humber College and I felt so grateful and so excited. And he said, um, you know, we shouldn't dilly-dally. He said, uh, that was one of his favorite words, dilly-dally. He said, we need to move along down the hall. And I said, oh, okay, let's, let's go. And he said, well, your class is starting in about 10 minutes. And I sort of felt like the kid by the pool that the father pushes in. <laughs> Stan put his knee up on my back and shoved me in the door and I was in my first class. So it was excitement, and um, you know, I think I, I love radio, but I've enjoyed every moment that I've worked in education because I can't get away from hearing the results of my work. Radio was great because you'd do a good show and you'd, you'd do a good air check and you'd listen back to it and you'd be very, very proud. But now, wherever I go, I can't get away from students my students. And one of my favorite stories is, is I was complaining to someone about never being able to get away from my students and I had a back injury a few years ago and had to go in for an MRI and the nurse came up and she said, would you like music? And I said, oh, sure. She said, it helps with the noise in the MRI machine. So I put on the headphones. Boom, 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 boom. I go into the machine. Music starts, Q107. Hi, this is John Scholes. And I said, oh, it's one of my students. So, 
Now I surf the net and I listen online and I listen in the US and I hear students that I taught and I listen here in Canada, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, PEI, uh, you know, I hear them everywhere. So this is an honor. Thank you very much to the people that are in the program, to the dean, to the coordinators, one of my students, the coordinator, <laughs> to Dean, the station manager, Neil, thank you for your kind words. Terry, thank you for nice seeing you. All these people, I appreciate this honor that you've given to me. And the only thing I worried about tonight is having to stand up here because there's an expectation that you're going to say something really profound and wise. Um, I hope I don't disappoint you. The only thing I'd like to share with the new students is something that has worked for me. Take ownership. Everything you do, take ownership. My first radio station was up in Thompson, Manitoba, the warm sound north of 55. It was 150 miles from the Arctic Circle. It was a little 1,000 watt radio station. And I took ownership. I said, this is my station. I'm gonna be the best I can be because this is my station. When I started working at Humber College, I took ownership. I said, this is my school. The dean called me into his office, and it was a different dean than the current one. And he said, so what are your, what are your goals starting here at uh, Humber College? And I said, well, sir, um, I said, I'd like to make this the best broadcast program in the country. And he looked at me, and he said, that's pretty ambitious. And I said, well, I said, you know, go big or go home. I think we're well on our way to being the best, if not the best, and thank you to the people that are here now for taking it right now and running over the, the finish line. You've done that. Take ownership. Whatever you do, whatever station you work for, whatever you're involved in, say it's yours because you're gonna give that much more, more effort. The other thing that I'll say to you that uh, probably a lot of smarter people than me have said is that do something that you love. I don't ever feel like radio was work to me. Television never felt like work to me. Teaching doesn't feel like work to me because I love doing it. Steve Jobs had a commencement speech in, I think it was 2005 at Stanford, and he said some interesting things. He said science and art have to go together. So there's a lot of art in broadcasting but there's a lot of science, too, that may change the industry forever. Pursue something that you uh, really love, and you won't feel like you're working, ever. Most important, every one of you has a little voice. It's the little voice that tells you to turn left or turn right, to go to Humber or go to some other school. Uh, <laughs> To go into broadcasting or to go into nursing. That little voice is always there. To ask this person out or that person. Listen to your little voice. Trust your little voice. Your little voice usually won't steer you wrong. The final thing that uh, I remember from Job's speech was that um, something that Maury said about being fearless. Yeah, be be fearless, don't be afraid to be fearless, and don't be afraid once in a while to be foolish. Have fun. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jerry Shaman, for that beautiful speech. I don't know how to follow that, but let's give another round of applause for the 2017 Radio Humber Hall of Fame inductees. <laughs> this concludes this portion of the evening. If you can join us outside on the concourse for some dessert and coffee. Uh, thank you all for supporting this year's Humber Hall of Fame. Have a wonderful evening.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 